Okay, today we're going to take a look at some factor by grouping. All right, last thing that um, is usually taught in a chapter that deals with factoring. All right, every time that uh, you're going to be doing a factoring by grouping, uh, chances are you're going to have four terms. So that should be what you look for. You see four terms, and then you're going to think, oh, okay, this might just be a factor by grouping. All right, now, first thing you're going to do, since it is called factor by grouping, you are going to choose to group the first two terms together and I'm going to group the second two terms together. All right, now notice when I put that set of parentheses in there, I did include that little minus sign right there. Um, that clearly shows me now that I've got a negative 5x sitting right there in that term, so I want to make sure that I'm aware of that. All right, but so factor by grouping, I broke this up into two binomials. Now, I'm going to ignore the second one to begin with. All right, and I am just going to focus on this first binomial right here. I am going to look at these two, and I am going to take out the greatest common factor. All right, looking at 4 and 8, I can take out a 4. Looking at my variables, I can take out an x squared. All right, so my greatest common factor will be a 4x squared. All right, if I'm factoring that out, then I'm going to have a binomial here in the center. What's left after I take out that greatest common factor? 4 divided by 4 is going to give me a 1. I've got x to the third. I'm taking out two x's. That's just going to leave me with an x. One x, x is sufficient. All right, the plus sign is going to come down. All right, out of the second term, I'm undoing my distributive property. I am factoring out that 4x squared. So four divide, uh, 8 divided by 4 is going to be a 2. And then the x squareds, there won't be any left because you factored it out. All right, now I have taken the first binomial, the first group, and I've taken out the greatest common factor. So now I'm going to ignore this part of the problem, and I'm going to do the exact same thing to my second binomial. All right, I'm going to look at these numbers, and I'm going to try to take out the greatest common factor. All right, when both of them are a negative, almost every time you'll be pulling out a negative. So out of 5 and 10, I can pull out a negative 5. All right, I'm going to need my set of parentheses here because I will have to um, put my little binomial in here on what's left. I've got a negative 5x. I factor out a negative 5. That's going to leave me with just the x. A negative 10, factoring out the negative 5, it's going to leave me with a plus 2. All right, now, after you have done that first step, all right, the part that is in the parentheses is going to match, or is going to hopefully match. Um, and so once we do that, then again, I've got two terms. I've got a term here. I've got a term here. I've got a common, greatest common factor there, so I can factor those out. I can pull those out separately. So I am going to do that. Um, when I pull it out as a greatest common factor, I'm only going to write it once. So I will have an x plus 2 in part of my answer. All right, now I need to see what's left. After I pull those out and factor those out, what I have left is I've got a 4x squared left and a minus 5. Those two things will be put together and create my other binomial. So then I will also have a 4x squared minus 5. All right, final answer looks um, like two binomials being multiplied together. All right, so that's your basic pattern of factor by grouping. All right, so looking here at this second example, all right, I'm going to start off by doing the exact same thing. I have four terms, okay, and I can group the first two together and then group the second two together, and then hopefully this will work for me. So I'm going to do that. All right, and again, I included that plus sign inside that set of parentheses because then that tells me I clearly have a positive 6x sitting right there. All right, again, I'm going to ignore the second binomial right there, and I'm only going to focus on this first part. I'm going to take out the greatest common factor. All right, so between 5 and 20, the biggest thing I can take out is going to be a 5. Looking at the variables, I can take out at most an x to the third. So I will have 5x to the third and then two sets of parentheses. All right, now, 5x to the fourth, factoring out the 5x to the third is going to leave me with a plain x. Factoring uh, the 5x to the third out of the next term, 20 divided by 5 is going to give me a 4. And then x to the third, take out x to the third. I won't have anything left there. All right, now, I have factored the first binomial. Now I'm going to ignore that part. I'm going to just look at my second um, binomial here. And grace common factor that I could take out looks like it's going to be a 6, and it's going to be a positive 6 that I'm taking out. So I think I'm going to go ahead and indicate that it is a positive 6, because when I did it over here on this example, I took out a negative 5, so I literally wrote negative 5, and that helped me with the symbol that goes in the center here. So if I'm taking out a positive 6, if I actually write plus 6, all right, that tells me I took out a positive one. 
All right, now when I factor it out of this binomial, 6x, factoring out of 6, is going to leave me with an x. 24, factoring out of 6, is going to leave me with a 4. Okay, and again, as you see, the two inside set of parentheses, they're match, and that's what we want to happen. So when I factor those out one more time, because I've got two terms here, I'm going to factor those out, and I'm only going to need to write it once, because I am factoring it out. So I'll have an x plus 4 in the set of parentheses. All right, to come and form my other binomial of what's left over when I factor that out, I will have a 5x to the third, and I will have a plus 6. Those two will go together to create my first binomial right there. So a 5x to the third plus 6. All right, two sets of um, binomials being multiplied together is what your final answer is going to look like. Okay, taking a look at two more examples, uh, we're going to see a couple other scenarios that you might run into when doing this factor by grouping. All right, so for this third example, um, again, four terms here, and so that's going to be a dead giveaway. I should be doing factor by grouping. However, if you take a good look at all of your coefficients, they are all even numbers, I'm going to be able to factor out a greatest common factor before I even start doing my factor by grouping. All right, and also there's x's in each of them, so I can take out a greatest common factor there as well. All right, so the biggest number that I can take out of this for a greatest common factor is going to be a 2x. All right, so if you can factor out a greatest common factor, you should always do that before you start um, working the problem with any other type of factoring. So I'm going to take out that 2x. All right, I'm going to factor it out of each one of those terms. So 12x to the fourth, factor out 2x is going to give me a 6x to the third. All right, 10x to the third, factor out that 2x. I'm going to get a 5x squared. Minus 36x squared, factor out a 2x. That's going to give me a minus 18x. And then when I take the minus 30x, factor out the 2x, I'm going to get a minus 15. All right, so basically what's going to happen now, that 2x is just going to basically come all the way down. I'm not going to have to worry about it for the rest of the problem. I will concentrate just on these four inside terms, and I will do four factor by grouping like I have in the last two examples. So I am going to group those first two um, terms together, and I will group together the second two terms. Again, remembering to include that minus sign right there so that I can see clearly that that is a negative 18x. Okay, now, due to all of these, I did do it in different colors. However, I've got lots of parentheses here that tend to get a little confusing there. So I'm going to change these outside parentheses to brackets in this next step just to hopefully clear things up a little bit. All right, so then I'll have my bracket there. Make sure I give myself plenty of room. Bracket there. All right. Now, like I said, this 2x just comes straight down. I'm going to factor this factor by grouping just like I have to begin with. So I ignore the second binomial and I ignore that 2x right there. I'm just going to focus on this binomial right here. And I'm going to take out the greatest common factor. Okay. Greatest common factor between these two terms is going to be just x squared. So I'll take the x squared out. 6x to the third, factoring out an x squared is going to leave me with a 6x. All right, then the plus sign, that 5x squared, factoring out x squared is just going to leave me with 5 right there. All right, now I have done that part, so now I'm ignoring the 2x. I'm ignoring this first binomial. The only thing I have to focus on now is the second part of this. All right, um, I've got a negative 18 and a negative 15. Um, greatest common factor there is going to be a negative 3, so I'm going to pull out a negative 3. That's going to leave me uh, right here, negative 18x, factor out negative 3, it's going to leave me with a 6x. Negative 15, factor out a negative 3, that's going to leave me with a plus 5. All right, now, just as we have done in the past, all right, um, that two binomials right there that stand out are matching. Okay, so again, I've got two terms in there. I'm going to factor those out. When I factor it out, I only have to write them one time. So I'm going to do a 6x plus 5 in that binomial right there. Okay, then I'm going to take um, up here what was I factored out originally up here. That's the x squared term, and that's the negative 3. So I will pull those two down into a binomial in front. So I'm going to have an x squared minus a 3. And then we can't forget about that uh, first GCF that we took out. That 2x is going to have to come out all the way down and set in the very front of the problem. 
Okay, so final factored form when you had to pull out GCF first and then go into factor by grouping. All right, and then my uh, last example, one more scenario here. Um, four terms, all right, and I'm looking, I don't have a GCF, so then I can just go ahead and immediately start to group my things together. I'm going to group my first two terms together. I'm going to group my second two terms together. Be sure to include that negative right there so you see it's a negative 4x. So I ignore the second binomial. I focus on this. I take out the GCF. Okay, GCF there is going to be x squared. All right, so x to the third, take out an x squared. It's going to leave me with an x. 11x squared, take out the x squared. It's going to leave me with an 11. Okay, so that first part's done. I ignore all of this. Now I just focus on the second part of the binomial here. I've got a negative 4 and a negative 44. Looks like I can take out a negative 4. So a negative 4. Now when I do that, negative 4x, take out a negative 4, leaves me with an x. Negative 44, take out a negative 4, leaves me with a plus 11. All right, so everything is looking good up to this point. All right, we got two binomials right there that match. So now that in those two terms, I can again factor those out. When I factor it out, I only write it one time. So x plus 11. All right, and then I remember to put together the parts that I factored out in the previous step. So that x squared and that minus 4 is going to form the other binomial that I'm going to put there in front. So I'll have an x squared minus 4. Okay, now under normal circumstances, we've been able to stop, all right, just because of the examples that we were done. What you do have to be careful is after you factor by grouping, you really do need to take a look at both of these terms because you should recognize this as the difference of two squares. Another type of factoring that was learned earlier in a factoring chapter. Okay, so if you have something that you can continue to factor, so you got to keep doing it. X squared minus 4 is the difference of two squares. Okay, which if you recall, you take square root of the first term, take square root of the second term, and you write them both with a plus and a minus. So that is going to be factored and broken up into an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. And then you can't forget this uh, x plus 11. He's just got to come down and join the rest of the answer there, x plus 11. Okay, so that's a possibility of something that you might see as well. All right, so four nice little examples of factor by grouping, different types of scenarios that you might run into.